This week it was announced that ASOS had sealed a £330 million deal to obtain Arcadia Brands Top Shop, Top Man, Miss Selfridge and sports brand hit after Arcadia announced it had gone into administration at the end of November last year. It has confirmed the worst for many, as sadly the physical stores are not included within the deal, leaving thousands on the brink of redundancy. Because of the pandemic, our lives have had to move online, and with shops being closed for such a large portion of the year, and the threat of COVID-19 still hanging heavy in the air, our shopping habits have relied even further on online retailers who are benefiting heavily from this. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that Boohoo Group had acquired the Debenhams brand for £55 million and would be closing all 118 stores, leaving 14,000 people jobless. Topshop have 70 stores currently, although at the peak of its high street reign had over 300 worldwide. The closure of the stores will leave 2,500 people jobless. This is a sector heavily dominated by women as they make up four out of five employees. So this is another huge blow for the disproportionate level of women in employment and women in business. We all know the high street is struggling, but with two big name brands now departing imminently, it may never recover. In normal times, there would likely be another retailer in the pipeline to take its place or move into empty units, but with the uncertainty that COVID-19 and seemingly endless lockdowns bring, plus the business rates break issued by the government due to end in April, retailers will be reluctant to make such a bold financial move. Inevitably, this is gonna leave many units empty. The closure of these high street staples doesn't just affect the brand in question, but the high street as a whole. Another thing this deal has outlined is how little big brands care about people, which again, isn't really a surprise, but hard to see it manifested like this. This deal is about saving a brand. And while yes, it is an iconic one, a brand is made up by the people within it, not just the clothes it sells. ASOS announced on their social media accounts at around 7.45 a.m. on Monday that Topshop and Topman was joining the ASOS family. However, this was before the Arcadia staff had even been told by Topshop. Imagine waking up, grabbing your morning coffee, popping on Instagram to be told by ASOS that you no longer have a job. It's disgusting and it's shameful. Shame. This is following on from the fact that the news of Arcadia going into administration was also announced in the press before it was announced to the staff. Looking at mainstream media reports on the sale, while the job losses are acknowledged, neither brand is held to account for how it handled either announcement directly with the staff affected. I cannot express enough just how disgraceful this is. These aren't so-called unskilled workers as retail workers are often labelled. These are business savvy, creative minds that have spent tireless hours and years working for a brand they love, making them money to basically be kicked in the dirt as they reach the door to leave. The sad thing is that there was a physical retailer interested in making a deal to acquire the brands as it was reported that Next were in talks. However, because ASOS and Boohoo were talking bigger bucks, the administrators focused on brokering a deal with them. Rather than going for slightly less money, but with a deal that would keep the stores open and the thousands of employees in work. Sadly, I guess that's capitalism for you. I worked for Topshop uh, for around two years in between 2017 and 2020. Even when I joined the brand three years ago, you could see that there were problems. Topshop have been too slow to pick up quickly on developing trends and have been left behind by many once loyal customers. With a generation relying heavily on influencer marketing, brands need to be quick on the ball to capitalize off this if they want to keep afloat. And unfortunately, Arcadia just didn't do that. And let's not even get into the damaging association with Sir Philip Green. How that man still has a knighthood is beyond me. Which bit are you not understanding? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Following the BHS scandal in 2016, where Green sold the company to a former bankrupt for one pound, resulting in the closure of the company 11,000 job losses and a 571 million pound pension deficit, the knighthood should have been stripped then and there. Never mind the numerous accusations of sexual harassment and workplace bullying over the years. One even more disgusting point to add is that the family are set to receive 50 million pounds out of the sale of Topshop. Close the stores, make the people redundant and then pocket an extra 50 million to add to your already 930 million pound net worth. At a minimum, he should be stripped of his knighthood and banned from ever being allowed to own or run a business ever again. Actually, scrap that, he should probably just be thrown in jail. Oh 
I could talk about this topic for hours, as well as my own personal experiences with the brand. Let's not even get started on the shit show that was Topshop Australia, but I'm gonna wrap it up here. My thoughts really are with the thousands of staff, my friends and ex-colleagues who have been affected by this. Keep your heads up and please reach out to friends and family if you're struggling. You'll see my face occasionally on the Turn Left channel, but until next time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe because we need an independent media for independent voices.